Hello, this is a lecture about aircraft orientation described via Euler angles. So this is the aircraft orientation is represented via a rotation transformation from the earth fixed body axis to the XYZ body fixed axis system on the airplane. The idea is that we want to we can track the CG in the earth fixed axis coordinate system but all the calculations we do on the aircraft are done in the body fixed axis. So we need to know how the two are related because the gravity vector we know in the earth fixed axis system but we need its force in the body fixed axis system. So this is all review of stuff that you learned in 415. And in fact, that was on the, the first quiz we had was to go back and study the Euler angles. So the Euler angles are a result of three sequential rotations in this particular order. Psi about the z-axis, theta about the uh, x-axis, sorry, y-axis, and phi about the x-axis. So let me see if I can demonstrate that with the airplane. So here's the airplane, and you can imagine it pointing north in the Earth fixed axis system. And the first thing that happens is the airplane yaws through an angle psi. Then it pitches through an angle theta, goes up, and then it banks right wing down through an angle phi. And that's its XYZ orientation relative to the Earth fixed axis coordinate system. You can see the way it is here, gravity would be acting straight down, and we need to know how gravity is related to the orientation of the aircraft in XYZ coordinate system. All right, so you should have derived this in 415. So I'm not going to go through the derivation again, but we'll go through an explanation. So initially you start out with the Earth fixed axis system, X north, Y east, Z down, and the origin is here. And then you translate that axis to the center of gravity of the airplane. So that's the first thing you do is translate <coughs> to where the aircraft actually is, to the CG here. And then we do the psi rotation about the Z axis. So the axis X1, which is the translated earth fixed axis system, rotates through the angle psi to an axis system X2, Y2, Z2. Notice Z doesn't change because it's rotate, the rotation happens about that axis. So that's the first thing that happens. <coughs> and this set of equations represents that transformation from x1, y1, z1 to x2, y2, z2, or in matrix form, it's represented by a transformation matrix called LZ, because it's rotation about Z, about Psi. <clears throat> if we zoom in on my rough drawing over here, see if I can get it centered. What you're doing is you're taking the uh, X1 axis and the Y1 axis and then you're writing it in coordinates or components in the X2, Y2 system. So for example, the X1 vector here is split into components along the X2 axis and along the Y2 axis. So you get X1 cosine and sine into those components. And then the Y1 component is, or the Y1 axis is split into components along the X2 and Y2 system. So you get Y1 sine and cosine. And then you add the, the two parts of this that are in the X2, Y2 direction. So these two parts get added together to be the X2. And then these two parts, notice there's a negative here because that's backward. These two get added or subtracted to give the Y2 part. 
and that's exactly what happens in the equations that are listed here. All right, so let's zoom back out here. All right, so that's the transformation about the psi, uh, about the z-axis. So that's the first rotation. Then we did the same thing, only th this is about theta, and it's about the new y2 axis. So this is nose pitch up, and you get a new axis x3, y3, z3. So I'm trying to show that here. You get this rotation about the y, the new y axis. And so you get a new x axis and a new z axis through the angle theta. And you get this transformation matrix here, Ly, because it's a transformation about the y axis rotated through an angle theta. So you go from z2 x2, y2, z2 to x3, y3, z3. <clears throat> and then once you get to that axis system, then we do the final rotation, which is a bank angle rotation about the x3 axis. So that's the axis out, kind of the nose of the airplane, and that's through an angle uh, phi, bank angle. And so we get, finally, when we're all done, we get the x, y, z body fixed axis system. So that transforms coordinates in the earth fixed axis system once you start all the way back at the top all the way through uh, to the final axis system. So here's the transformation is cut off here but this is LX about phi. So in order to transform all the way from earth to body you stick all three together. So you do psi first about z theta about y, phi about x, and you multiply those three matrices together and you get LBE, which is the transformation from Earth to body. And this is in appendix A.412, page 313. You get this one here. <clears throat> now, what if we want to go the other way? What if we know our body fixed axis system and we want to transform back to the Earth? Well, you go backwards. You go minus phi first, minus theta, and minus psi. And so you use the individual transformations, multiply them together, going from body through minus phi, minus theta, minus psi, all the way to earth. And then you get LEB, which is from body to earth. So this is in section, this is the equation 4.4.3, page 99 in your book. Uh, one thing to notice is that there's a thing with Euler angles called gimbal lock. When theta is plus or minus 90 degrees, there's an ambiguity in the Euler angles that can represent that orientation. Um, if you take um, your hand or an airplane and rotate it through the, this sequence here, rotate psi through 90, theta through 90 and phi through 0 and I'll do that with my hand here so here we are rotate psi 90 theta 90 and no phi notice the orientation now we're going to start out the same orientation here no psi but we do a theta 90 and then a negative phi we end up with the same orientation we got so that means there's two different Euler angles to give the same position and that's causes an ambiguity there are other methods to represent airplane orientation that are used in flight simulation where you want to be able to do theta of 90 degrees, <clears throat> but that's beyond the scope of what we're going to do in this class. All right, so let's say that we wanted to calculate the flight path of an airplane as a function of time. So we want to know where the aircraft CG is as a function of time in the earth fixed axis system. So you can imagine taking off, this is a, a kind of a curvy path, but you take off and then you wander around X, Y, Z space like that. We want to calculate that. <clears throat> well, it would mean that we would calculate the integration of the Earth fixed velocities, X, E dot, Y, E dot, Z, E dot. <clears throat> Unfortunately, usually when we are calculating the airplane, we know the velocities in the 
body fixed axis, not in the earth. <clears throat> so what we have to do is transform the body fixed axis through LEB to earth fixed axis. Um, and then we integrate. So we know this. And then we can calculate this and then integrate these to get the flight path. The difficulty here is integrating this means that you need the equations for these. So we say, well, we want to know the aircraft orientation, but when we are calculating the equations of motion of the aircraft, usually we don't know these, but we do know the roll rate, the bitch rate, and the yaw rate, because those are calculated from the equations. And these are in body fixed coordinates, but we need the Euler angle rates. Fortunately, there's a relationship between those two. And your book goes through a long derivation that we're going to skip. Suffice it to say, you represent uh, P, Q, and R in the psi, theta, and phi dot directions. And when it's all done, you get this relationship or the inverse relationship down here. This takes the Euler rates and gives P, Q, and R. And this is what we actually need is if we know P, Q, and R, then we can get the Euler rates and then plug them back up in the equation up there to get the flight path. It's not easy to solve. It's a nonlinear differential equation and not easy to solve. Um, you can see page 100 where they talk about this. Okay, back to the equations of motion. The whole reason that we <coughs> wanted to know the airplane orientation is we wanted to know, well, what is the gravity vector in the body fixed axis system? Which way does gravity point? We know in the earth fixed axis system it points down. And so in the earth fixed axis, it's going to be zero in the x direction, zero in the y, and g in the z, because z points down. So we need to transform the earth fixed axis of gravity to get the body fixed axis. And we use LBE because we're using we're going from earth to body. So we write that matrix from the book, LBE down. But fortunately, because we have zeros here and here, we don't need to worry about these because they're going to get multiplied by zero. So we just need the last column that's going to be multiplied by g, and that gives us the gravity vector in the body fixed axis system. Sound good? All right, so there's our gravity. And then the other force that we need to apply on our airplane are the aerodynamic forces, and we just call those x, y, and z, and we're going to have to work on those in another lecture. So we're back to the force equation we had from the previous lecture. <clears throat> we have the x velocity equation u dot, y is v dot, and z is w dot. <clears throat> this is in the body fixed axis system, you can tell, because we have these omega cross v terms that showed up. And then here is the gravity vector. <clears throat> and then here is the aerodynamic forces. So there's the aerodynamic. And then this is gravity. So this is sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. All right, last thing we need to talk about is that there is a particular body fixed axis system that makes things easier to calculate <clears throat> when we're wanting to do the aerodynamic forces. It's called the stability axis. So it has a name. It's used when we're calculating the stability of the aircraft. It's a body fixed axis system. And the way it works is look at this picture of an airplane here. There's the center of gravity. <clears throat> and any old body fixed axis system, we would put x out the nose and z down. And we could choose the orientation of this however we want. <clears throat> this special stability axis system, we put x pointing directly into the relative wind. So if the airflow is coming in this way, we point XS that way, and then Z is perpendicular down to that. So angle-wise, here is our angle of attack, right? It's the angle between some the reference line X on the airplane and the relative wind. 
So there's alpha. And then the velocity vector of the airplane is pointing into the relative wind that way. So this is our flight path angle, gamma. And then theta, the pitch angle of the airplane in the XZ coordinate system is gamma plus alpha. <coughs> That's for the, X, the, the general XZ coordinate system. In the stability axis system, things become easier because the fly path angle is theta of that axis system. Here's x along here. So theta is the orientation up to that. The other thing that's nice is that the forward velocity is the velocity vector. Why? Because we've pointed xs into the wind, and so we don't have any v sideways and we don't have any w. So that makes things a little easier. So again, this is called a stability axis system with the x-axis called xs pointed into the wind and z perpendicular to that. And the angle theta is now equal to the fly path angle for that axis system. The other nice thing is that the sense of the lift is perpendicular to v infinity then the z force is just minus lift because z is down lift is up gosh i didn't get that very perpendicular did i this should be in the same direction as the opposite of zs and then the drag is backward and x is forward and so the x force is just minus d so drag is backwards in the xs direction Lift is upwards in the ZS direction, and gamma is theta S.